Haha. <laughs> What's going on, people? Happy first day of 30 days to $10,000. I let that go on a little longer than I normally do. Uh, normally, I start early, but today, I was like, hey, it's spring. We'll wait. We'll start a minute late. And typically, it gives people more time to come into the room. And with that, I want to say welcome. Thanks for coming in, sharing part of your day with me. And uh, we're going to get cracking. But before that, I just want to say I let that video roll because that is one of the things that I have come to see in many people. They have the ability. It's not a lack of ability. It's not a lack of intellect. It's not a lack of money. It's a lack of courage. There are many, many people who do not feel that they are worth X amount of dollars. They just do not feel that way. Tribalism is a big part of it. And if you never heard that expression before, tribalism is if your grandfather was a fireman and your dad was a fireman and all your uncles are firemen, the expectation is for you to be a fireman. Nothing wrong with being a fireman, but the thing is, maybe you want to be an astronaut. If you go ahead and become an astronaut, you may cause a family ripple because you've outgrown your upbringing. It's very, very powerful stuff. I've talked to people about this many, many times and how tribalism will affect you is uh, I had lunch with a good friend today and we were talking about Internet marketing, selling online. In a country of 320 million, there might be 500,000 people such as myself, which is 500,000 people is a lot of people. But when you compare and contrast that to the rest of the population, you can know a thousand people and not know someone that's doing this. You can know 2000 people and still not know someone that's doing this. So with that, some of the courses, some of the tasks, some of the objectives are going to seem a little strange. <laughs> They're going to seem a little weird to you and especially your family. With that, this is just cautionary advice. Do what you want. I suggest that you don't tell your family about this until you realize some results. Because the negativity will start. Uh, like I said, the consult this weekend, we went back and forth. And when we just got through that breakthrough, it was like, oh, when you have people telling you that you are not shit, that you will never be shit, and it's not one person, and it's not two, and it's not three, it's a legion, you may at some point adopt that mindset. And that's not really going to be good for you and your success. It really isn't. Many people, what is it, the death of a salesman, Arthur Miller, many men are leading lives of quiet desperation. It's very true. It's very, very true. So with that, let's jump into it. I'm not going to tell you what I did. I'm, you know, the fact that I wrote a book means absolutely nothing to you in your wallet. It, it really doesn't. Uh, the fact that, you know, I've traveled around the world means nothing to you. I think the most critical thing that is relevant in our relationship that we're building is I was where you are broke, desperate, not really feeling too good with myself. And there are people who's like, hey, I'm not broken. I'm not desperate. I'm not talking to your ass then, okay? But there are some people that I'm talking to. There are some people right now who are in a position of life is not going as well as they want it to be, and it hasn't gone that way for some time. And you should just go ahead and say congratulations for showing up today because many people simply refuse to even try. But that was where you were. Didn't have anything. No, no golden, no silver spoon, no golden spoon, none of that stuff. And I figured out a way to go from nothing to something. So that's what this course is about. How to go from nothing to something. How to build something. My video on YouTube, the producer versus consumer, that is something that I really, really believe in. Is if you become a producer in your community, whatever being a producer is for you and your community, it's going to be varied across many different demographics. 
you're going to become a resource. You'll become someone that people speak about, maybe good, maybe bad. <laughs> they will talk about you. You will become different. So my value to you is I am your Sherpa. I am the guy that can guide you from not having shit to actually having shit. This is a very real webinar. It's not for the faint at heart. It's not for scared little bitches. It's not. But that's the deal. Uh, many of you already know who I am. Many of you already have seen the videos. And this is going to be an amplification of stuff you've seen in the videos. Because I don't believe that I can save everyone. That is not a notion that sticks in my mind. However, I do believe I can help some people. I do believe that I can be that Sherpa, you know, the guy that guys to people climbing the mountain up there and it's like, hey, there's a cliff over there. Well, there are goats in that in the ravine. They don't like humans. That's um, that's 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 my value to you. So with that, you're going to need a few things. Since this is day one, we're going to talk about day one stuff. You're going to need a pen or a pencil. If you don't have one right now, don't lose it. Uh, you will need one going forward. Paper or notepad. The right fucking attitude. Let me expand upon that. The right attitude is more important than prestige, is more important than connections, is more important than money. If you have the wrong fucking attitude, you probably need to turn this webinar off and go back to whatever you were doing because you will not do well here. Just simply put, you will not do well here. If you do have the right attitude, then stay, sit down, kick your shoes off and enjoy yourself. Yes, you can use your iPad. However, you will get more juice from writing it down. I will explain that to you. The way that your brain processes information is different on how you the information is entered. When you read a book, you're using a different part of your brain. When you write and read words on paper, you're using a different part of your brain. The more parts of your brain that you use, the better it works for you. Writing is a lost art. And typically, and this is just something I've noticed, I stop writing in terms of using pen and paper for a lot of stuff. And this is something that I got really back into. I noticed that my handwriting went to shit because I wasn't using it. I mean, I was, I was like chicken scratch, all kinds of stuff. And I used to be very, very proud of my handwriting. Also noticed that my thought process wasn't as fluid as it once was. Part of that was because I wasn't getting that process from... Because when you write something, you have to think. It's like, okay, I am going to write X, Y, and Z. And you're thinking about it before you write it. Whereas when you type something on your iPad or your phone, you could just start tapping stuff and think it's a, it's a different process. It's a different way that it makes your brain work. Just a hint for you that the pen and paper and pencil and paper is good stuff. Format, 25 to 40 minutes per day. Q&A session after the presentation. Recorded versions of this course will be available in the Facebook group. I'll talk about that later. And now I, I like pledges. And this one's different. Very, very different from the first one. And it really started from, because there was going to be something else here, but that conversation this weekend really, really bothered me. There are many, many people who absolutely feel that they're not worth the success that they want. There's just no feeling. So... This is your pledge. I am worth my ambition. I live for now. The past be damned. The future is mine to shape. Understand success is not a moment. It is a life. Despite the fear in my heart, I will move forward each day I breathe. That's your pledge. We will be saying this every day just to let you know. Folks who are here for the last one know I will do this. Goals. Big, big, big. Once again, going back to the writing down. You're going to write down these goals. You're going to design your life, live how your intention warrants, your intention, not Bill's intention, not Jesse's intentions, but yours. The goal here is to increase your business to 10,000 per month net. 
let's discuss net versus gross revenues. Gross revenues, it's like, yeah, our business made $100,000. What was the net? Uh, $2,500. We want to get that $2,500 up to $10,000. The net is what you get to pull out of your business. <laughs> the net is what you get to pay taxes on and all of that good stuff. But that means that we're actually going to be at going for $120,000 per year net. Yes, uh, we're cranking the goals up. I do believe in aiming high. At some point, you're going to gain freedom from the normal life of, thank God it's Friday. This is going to sound very, very odd. I do not participate in any level of particular joy because the day is Friday. My Mondays are the same as my Fridays. My Mondays and Tuesdays, and it, it's all the same. And it's good because I control my time. I will say that until I started putting together my own mastermind group of people who work like I do, that it was kind of lonely because all of my friends with jobs can't talk on the phone, can't do anything. They go home, they're married, got wife and kids, can't. And it's you can only do stuff on the weekends and that to me is just a horrible fucking way to live. It really, really is. So with the, in the gaining of more money, and understand money is a tool. Money is not power. Money is not power. Money is a tool. You get to this level of tool of income and you practice good financial management. You free yourself from this matrix. You are part of the matrix, yet you are apart from the matrix because you've kind of carved out your own sub matrix of the matrix where you're living life on your terms and you're also coexisting with the other inhabitants of the matrix, except, you know, you have special privileges, so to speak, that you've earned and built for yourself. Now, I'm going to introduce you to one of my friends. His name's Harvey. That's his real name. And uh, no. That's not his boat, but he's got one like it. I met Harvey years and years and years ago. I was a executive, sales executive for Renacrate, and we're in Savannah. And we did our presentation where if you've ever done a trade show, you it's exhausting. It's exhausting because you're saying the same thing every time a new group of people. Hey, hi, I'm Glendon Cameron, and I just want to introduce you to Renacrate. Over and over and over. Man, it just, ooh. Well, I was there with Big Bill, and we did the trade show, and it went very well. And we were in a stand in a hotel that was right next to the river in Savannah. So I'm out walking, and I just see this beautiful boat. Excuse me, yacht. I see this beautiful yacht. And I mean, this thing is just looking like, you remember Miami Vice from back in the day? It had that kind of look. And there were people milling about, and they were just talking. And I'm a curious fella, so I go over there. I'm just like, wow, this is a beautiful uh, boat you have. And everyone corrects me. It's a yacht. <laughs> I was like, excuse me. What a beautiful yacht. You know, oh, no, I actually said, what a beautiful fucking yacht you have. Right. And then Harvey pops up and you're right. And it is an absolutely beautiful fucking yacht. What's your name, man? I was like, I'm Glendon. He's like, come aboard. Never met this guy. Didn't know anything. But uh, went aboard and just had my horizons expanded because all of the people around Harvey were really polished and a little snooty. Harvey, you would think was going to be working in the engine room, but he owned this, he owned this boat. I'm talking to Harvey and everything. And he's like, so uh, I see you're doing the trade show. And that's like, how'd you know that? It's like, you still got your name tag on. <laughs> I was like, damn. So I ripped it off. And we just started talking. And he said, yeah, I used to do that. And I was like, so what do you do now? He said, well, I own an oil refinery. And I said, wow, that's uh, not must be nice work if you get it. He said, no, it's not. He's like, I've almost died like 10 times. Uh, started out as a wildcatter in Texas oil fields. He said, it, it's, it's, uh, he said it was a journey. He said it was a journey. But uh, things are pretty good now. I was like, yeah, you got this nice yacht, you know, they say yacht with emphasis. And he said, he said, the best thing about this uh, yacht is not that I own it. It's I can go anywhere in the world that I want to. And I don't have to be in a hurry to get there. 
He's like, um, he said, I learned some things. He said, I started off like you. I know I was a salesperson. And then I got into the oil fields. And he said, one day I just decided that I wanted to live life on my own terms. And that's what I did. And Harvey, uh, later on, because I, I looked him up, you know, he wasn't a billionaire, but he was damn close. <laughs> damn close. And this guy started from nothing. He was very personable, uh, really, really humble, uh, just a really, really, really cool guy. Um, but the thing that really got me was he invited me into his world. He invited me to the world because if you've ever been on one of these yachts, it is like it'll just blow your mind. I mean, there's like rosewood, just everything just says scrumptious. And I, I talked to him and I said, you know, I had to go back because I was supposed to meet up with some people because I just was getting out of there to, because after doing the trade show, your mind's just kind of like, whoa. And they were having drinks later on. So I leave. And obviously, yeah, we'll be here for a few days. Come on back if anytime you want to chat. So every day I was in Savannah, we will go talk to Harvey. And I learned a lot. I would consider Harvey. I never saw him again. We never, ever talked again. But I would consider him a mentor because he made me see that where I was was not where I had to remain. I'm telling you, Harvey, it, Harvey would fit in with a biker club. You know, if you saw a bunch of hells, ain't, you wouldn't think, oh, who's that? No, no. He just fit in. He just fit in. And uh, I think he enjoyed surrounding himself with people who perhaps thought they were better than because his language was rougher than mine. But the fact is, if it wasn't for him, they wouldn't be riding around in that fancy boat. It wouldn't be enjoying, you know, eating all that stuff. I mean, the place was nice. I had a few meals with him. And it, it's something else that came from that. It also said that being open to new ideals can really set your life apart because when I look at what that boat costs, because later on, you know, at the time I was young, I didn't understand what that thing meant. When I started to do research, I mean, at the time, what he had was about a million dollar boat, million dollar yacht. At the time, this was a 2000. You, you just have to understand the level of wealth you have to have to afford something like that. Because that's just the price of the boat. And there's maintenance and having a crew. And this boat that's really close to uh, the edge here where the drop down diving deck. He had a triple decker. He had a triple decker yacht. Thing would probably be six, seven million right now. Or maybe maybe ten. And um, that's what he had. And it was just like it just blows my mind that someone who came from circumstances just like mine was able to reach that level of freedom in life because the thing is that didn't impress me was it wasn't the money the money was impressive but the fact was this dude was free you know he had all of refinery he's like i just had people you know went in i hired the ceo he runs the thing and you know i just collect money that's all i do i collect money and i sell around the world with women half my age that's what I'm doing. And uh, I will never, ever forget Harvey. <laughs> ever. Ever. One of the realest people I've ever met in my life. One of the things he told me was, you must believe that you are worth what you want. And uh, that's what I'm telling you. Many of you can do this 10000 a month. Easy. Not going to say it's ha going to happen overnight. Not going to say that it's going to be next year or even the year after but what's going to happen is once you really start to believe the money will start going into your account because when you don't believe that you're worth it you start to do things to make sure you don't get it you know you don't work as hard you make poor decisions you hang around the wrong people when i say hang around the wrong people i'm not talking about your poor family with missing teeth some of those folks can be fun i'm talking about the people who laugh in your face and will stab you in the back as soon as you turn those people can set your success back seriously but understand you can be as successful as you want to be and 
make that decision that you are worth it. Everyone's dream is not to have a yacht and sail around the world. For some of you, that uh, $10,000 net per month is your kids will not have student loan debt. It means that you get to take care of grandma. It means that, hey, if you're married and you want to have a traditional marriage where the wife stays home, she can stay at home and raise your 2.5 kids and you don't have to worry about the money. It can mean something as, you know, having a it, There's so many different meanings to that money for different people. There's uh, some people, I mean, just to be really, really straight up, an extra thousand dollars a month would be life changing right now. An extra thousand would be life changing. Life changing. All right. So this is how we're going to start this before we get into the task, the techniques. We're going to talk about process. Power of six. This was a part of. Twenty five hundred dollars, thirty days, twenty five hundred dollars. It's going to be part of this. Plus, there's going to be another one that's a little special. Power of six is simply you create a list of six things you need to do. Rank them in priority. Do one thing. Let me say that again. One thing until it's done. Once it's done, then you move on to the next agenda item. What you can't get done on the first day. There's some things you just can't. You know, you, you got six things, you knock out five and like you take number six, move it. And it becomes number one unless there's something more pressing because you have to have flexibility. Because if something hits your desk and it's a fire, you can't take this item that was not a fire from the previous day and put it ahead of the fire. You can't do that. So you'll re-rank and you'll put it wherever it needs to be. It could be one. It could be even six again. Then you'll do what you can and you repeat this process every freaking day. You will find yourself getting more stuff done than you ever did in your life. It will shock you at this, how this simple system will make you extremely productive. And that's one of the things about this course. If I don't give you the framework and the process on how to do this stuff, it's going to be overwhelming. It's going to be overwhelming. But if you have a system and a methodology, then you can take the million piece puzzle and work it. Whereas if you have no system and someone just dumps a million pieces on you, you're overwhelmed and you're just liable to walk away and say, nah, I'm not messing with that. It's too much for me. But this is one of the ways that you're going to be able to do this stuff and change your life. This changed my life. This is one of the reasons in my writing groups when people are like, you're so freaking prolific. I, I, I don't write nowhere near as many words as I used to. I was just like, ah, that's the animal. I don't just lock my house, myself up in the house for six, eight hours a day and do nothing but write. That can actually have a toll on your physical. It can have a toll on your physical well-being. Stop that. But it's a system. I work in systems. It's not sexy. It's not glorious, but it gets things done. Now, this is another part, the 30 days of change. This is an addition to the power of six. You've got your six things. And let's talk about these six things. Say you are new to Amazon. And if you're new to Amazon and you're doing FBA, there's a lot to learn. Instead of just sitting there for hours and hours and hours, you're going to say, OK, what's the most important thing I need to learn? With Amazon, it would be the terms of service, because if you do something wrong, they will get rid of you and they will not even apologize. They won't even kiss you. They'll just get on. So <clears throat> there's a lot of stuff to read. How do you do this? You got your power of six, which is for task. Well, let's say let's just say 30 days to change. You'll do that for Amazon. So you're going to allot 15, 20 minutes per day and you're going to do whatever you can in that 15, 20 minutes. Then it's like it's done. Then next day you're going to do whatever you can. And once you get into this, you'll start to see how it works. You're like, oh, you get stuff done and you're not stressed out and you're not freaked out and you're not overwhelmed because it's a system. Now, the thing is, with this system, if you do it every day and you do it for a year. It's 365 action points. That's 365 things that you've got done done not in process not working done this will have an incredible change in your self-confidence 
I think one of the reasons that many people are fearful is they'll do something, it doesn't go well, and they'll stop. So they build up this residue of, oh, I can't do it. It's too hard. It's too big. It's too much. It's, it's all that stuff. And it builds up. And the next thing you know, you're not doing anything. Action is the greatest truth there is. And if you're inactive, you don't experience any truth. So this is another thing that you can do to segment. Because we're going to talk about this more because I'm a process guy. Everything is in your process. Everything. Everything is in your process. You can have great days where you just kill it. But I would rather have okay days where I'm on process or on plan than, you know, a month with four or five outstanding days. Because I'll give you an example. And next time you take a road trip, if you're not a slow lane driver, do this. Take your car, put it on cruise control, whatever the speed limit, four miles above, and get your butt all the way over in the right hand lane. For speeders, it's going, I don't want to do that because you feel like you're losing time. Put this cruise control on, stay there, and watch how many people that pass you that you actually catch up with. They'll pass you, they're going 100 miles an hour, then next thing you know, you are uh, right with them again. And you're like, and you have not increased your speed, but you're still where they are. What did they do? They burnt up a lot of resources and gas. More wear and tear on the car, more wear and tear on the tires. And yet you consistently at the same speed, not faster, not slower, same speed. You're right where they are. And frequently when they have to pull over to get gas because they ran out, you actually get ahead of them. I have done this for years. I used to be a speeder. I was one of those people that got a ton of tickets. That's one of the reasons I know how to beat tickets. Uh, I just did it one day because I had a lot on my mind. And I was like, I don't need to be speeding, thinking of this. And I just kept noticing people that passed me. I kept catching them up and I'm passing them. And they were pulling off to get gas. And I was just steadily going on. That is the power of consistency. A consistent, moderate speed that doesn't stop will get you further than sprinting, than all out craziness. This is how we ran our storage auction business. It, that's why I say, you know, business is not a, mar- a sprint, it's a marathon. If you can be consistent, you can get pretty far in life. Now, this program for most people is for people already in business because once we start really getting deep, some of this stuff will seem like Greek to you. But the movement from where you are to where you want to be is a process built on days of doing better things for you and your business. Once again, going back to the consistency. That is what's going to get you where you want to be. All right. So we're going to move that over there. And we're going to open up the floor to questions. First day, goofus. All right. Well, at least you had audio. Uh, for everyone that is in the group, you'll get the video because I did record it. Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> at least I turned on the recording. Uh, sorry about that. Let's see. All right, let me get past that. I, I'm sorry about that. This is what happens. Uh... <laughs> well, okay. All right. Uh, yeah, I will hold on a second. And uh, let's see. I'll do this. I will just uh, take a moment. <laughs> and I will thumb through the slides. Pretty much, uh, not a lot of crazy stuff, but like I said, I'll do it.
All right, I'll, I'll let that stay. Yeah, that right there. I guess that makes more sense about Harvey now seeing the boat. As far as I know, he's still living on that yacht. Or he has a bigger one. Who knows? I, I will say, it does feel... If you ever gone, I, I will say this, and it's going to sound very foolish coming from me, but I, I do this all the time. Every now and then, I think everyone needs to experience a little luxury. Like go stay in a ridiculously priced hotel room for a weekend or something. Or that That's the thing I got from the yacht because it felt freaking nice. I mean, it was just like, ooh, ooh, I'm on a boat. Like that uh, Saturday Night Live parody. I think it was funny. Uh, I will leave that up for a second. This is really the most. This is the this is the magic jelly bean. <laughs> this is right here is the magic jelly bean. Getting stuff done because when you get stuff done, and say it doesn't work out, the faster you get to that point, the faster you can revise. If you have a plan in your head that you think is good, but you never execute, you never take action. You can have that plan in your head for four, five, six years. Then the day that you go out and start, and like, oh, this isn't going to work. You could have found that out four or six years earlier if you had taken action. I, I see that quite a bit. And this is about the 30 days of change, 30 action points. Action is the greatest truth there is. If you can get busy, even if you're making mistakes, you will get so much further ahead in your life because you're learning. Oh, and we did have to go back. Okay, here is uh, the first project. I was going to go back to that. Uh, for the next 30 days, you're going to write 50 to 100 words per day about you, your family, and your business. Now, let's talk about this writing thing. That's why you needed a pen. That's why you needed pen, paper. You do not have to be Hemingway or some great writer to do this. Do not even start with it. Well, I can't. No, it doesn't matter about your grammar. It doesn't matter about your punctuation. It matters that you take the time to create this book of you. What will you write about? You'll write about your goals and your ambitions and also your fears. Once you can pull your fears out, put them on paper and isolate them, then you can beat the shit out of them. You're just like, mm, yeah, you ain't so big now. And it pulls you out. You're only two feet tall. All this time, I thought you were a giant. That's the power of writing. So starting the day, this is why you need the pen and paper. You're going to start right 50, 100. It's going to take you, you know, unless you're just really slow, it's going to take you five minutes, three to five minutes to do this, three to five, maybe 15. And how will you do this? First, you'll create a theme. It's like, what am I going to write about? Am I going to write about my business today? And the thing is, you don't have to write about the same thing every day. You can write about your business one day. You can write about you one day. You can write about your family one day. You can write about uh, the crazy person you saw pulling a booger out of their nose at lunch. The whole thing is for you to consistently develop this habit. And, okay. All right. <laughs> ah, that's funny. That's funny. That's funny. We love you. Wait for the free makeup. This, this course is free. That's the makeup. All right, let's get into it. Here are some questions. This is from Cleaver. What can I do today to start with no money or no transportation? Uh, okay, I'll just give you one idea. Go on Craigslist and look for some things that you can do or even be more creative. See, all right, you have no transportation. Let, let's uh, identify that. No barter pass or nothing. Because you're going to have to do what's called service work, where you tr exchange your time for something and you can create your own job. You can say, hey, I'll come clean out your garage. Hey, I'll come clean out your attic. Hey, I'll cut your grass. You're going to have to think that kind of stuff. 
or you can do, and this is going to sound crazy, you can go around your house and find all the shit that you don't need, stuff that you are not using, and put it on eBay. A typical person can raise anywhere from 500 to 4 Gs with just stuff laying around the house that they don't even need. Uh, Jamal, is there another place for me to get the power of six? I'm not as understanding essentially prioritize six items, do these in the completion every day. I mean, I'm, I'm not really, um, un rephrase that question. Donica. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'll see your back. Okay. When you talked about the power of six list, as well as the taking 20 to 40 minutes a day to take action, are they overlapping or is this 20, 40 minutes of action supposed to apply to something else that you need to get done outside the power of six? Okay. Power of six. Uh, give you an example. You want to write a book. What are you going to do? You've got to deal with the cover. So you can do this, write up six things dealing with the cover. It's like, I need to contact people on Fiverr. I need to go to Elance. I need to talk to these people. I need to pick colors. So you just, Break that task down into six things because you can go like, hey, I need to do a cover. And then it's got all these other parts of it because it's not like you can do a cover and then you have to talk with uh, your designers. But just break that down to six tasks. It's like, OK, I need to pick a font. Then you spend time picking the font. Then when that's done, I need to pick a color when that's done. And that's it's. The power of six helps you guide your action and makes your action more productive because if you woke up every day and just start doing stuff you're going to be successful because you're moving but if you wake up and you do it in a guided way you're going to be more successful and you'll get things done faster because you're focused <laughs> not that harvey uh justin are there any productivity increasing time saving tools, techniques, software that you find helpful? I got started years ago with Daytimer. It helped me out tremendously. I, that's probably why I'm stuck with pen and paper. I haven't used any software. The thing that I'm giving you in this webinar is what I use. Uh, I'm not. I can't say there's any. I can't say they're good or bad because I never used any of those things. Let's see. Terry is not hearing questions. Um, maybe you need to just refresh. <laughs> well, damn. I guess the pad and pen was a good idea. I wonder how many people were looking for a pen and pen. <laughs> okay. All right. You saw the slide. Uh, this question is from Cynthia. When you wrote your first book and put it on Amazon, did you use one of their free ISBNs or did you buy your own? Ooh, good question. I use their free ISBN because you can, this is what's going to happen. You have to buy your ISBNs from a broker and they're going to sell them to you in a group of 10 or 100. I think 10's 150. No, I think it's like 500. I think it's like $750 for 500 ISBNs because typically your ISBN is an identifier number that lets the world knows who's the publishing company of this book. And this is how the sales of your books are tracked across various platforms. If you are going to write a lot of books, if you're going to write or start a publishing company and have other people's books, you know, do contracts with them, then you promote their books. It would make sense to spend the $750. When I wrote my first book, I didn't know I was going to write a second one or a third one or a fourth one in that vein. So I didn't do that. Now, there is some debate about this because you get your own ISBNs, you do look more professional, but essentially you can get by very easily without it. Um, you would have to go to draft a digital if you want to get your books on iTunes because they'll give you an ISBN. My thing is until this, your writing business gets really big or you're making money, I would avoid the ISBNs because this is the thing. You own your work. So if you want to go ahead and revise your book, 
you're going to have to create a new ISN, ISBN for the revised version of the book anyway. So you can put that under your publishing company. And also, you need an ISBN for the ebook version. You'll need the ISBN for the audiobook version and the print version. Each version of the book must have its own ISBN if you're going to go that route. <laughs> Donica says, tell Justin to go to the dollar store and buy egg timer. Works like a charm. Uh, Keith, what service do you use for websites, design, and hosting? I use Bluehost for hosting. And web design, I use templates. And then, that's a good question, and we're going to talk about this because we talked about this at lunch with my friend. I have not put a lot of effort into websites for the last 18 months because I came to a realization. You can have the best website in the world, best hosting in the world, best template in the world. What's going to be your major problem? Discoverability. You can have a crappy ass website and say you do something stupid, like you're driving and it's like, hey, Keith, whatever his last name is, did X, Y, and people go to Google, then all of a sudden they're going to find your stuff because you did something stupid. You can work diligently for weeks and months and years and not that many people will find your website uh the biggest problem you have online is discoverability not the framework because uh let's see if i can find this guy i'm gonna show you something real quick if i can remember how to spell his name okay this guy i think this website gets like five hundred thousand hits per month but he's affiliated and he's connected with people and he gets recommended i want you to look at this not exactly oh that's pretty it is extremely clean it's there's nothing there you know he's about the minimalist life this is the website 500,000 255 i forget it's one of them he gets crazy traffic here there's not a lot of bells and whistles. There's nothing. It's very clean. The thing is, what I'm learning is people are overwhelmed with fancy. And You ever go to a website and you're trying to read something and then a pop-up happens and all this stuff happens? Frequently, that happens too often. You don't go back. Lean and clean. So your whole thing is you have to have a vehicle to get traffic to your site. It's not the site. It's the method that you get traffic to your site, if that makes any sense. Okay, is it possible to go from making a few hundred dollars a month to a whopping 10K? Yeah, it is. Now, let's talk about the real question that you didn't ask. How long is it going to take? That's the real question. Uh, there are people here who will do that in the next 90 days. There are people here. It's going to take them two years. It really depends upon you how much time you have, how much effort, what you're selling. There's so many variables. You know, everyone can like, okay, when you go to a website and it's like, yeah, you can do this. And I don't know you. And I'm not saying you're a bad person. I'm not saying this. I don't know your special skills or abilities, but I do know this, that everyone has the ability to do this. It's just who's going to work long and hard enough to make it happen. I mean, I was working... Let's see. Let me show you. I want someone, I want to actually tell you these stories that I'm doing about the freaking labor pool. That's real shit. I actually went through this. This is one I put up. I'm not going to play it. But I was making. 200 maybe 300 dollars a week working 40 to 60 hours when you factor in getting up and going there to the labor pool i had 12 and 18 hour days to make high twos to maybe 400 bucks a week working two jobs so that's what i mean when i said that i started off right where you are or worse i'm not kidding Uh, 
Uh, Terrence, what job can an unemployed person who's dead broke? What what jobs can an unemployed person do who is dead broke with transportation? Okay, <laughs> if you have insurance, and uh, let's see, we're not gonna. This is what I call a hustle. There's a difference between a hustle and a business. If you have a car. And then there's you can sign up with Uber and make anywhere from 150 to thousand bucks a week driving people around. This is part of the disruptive economy. They a lot of cab drivers are pissed at this company. Uh, they're saying stuff. If you have uh, now, let's talk about. You I mean this is something you can do if you have a car and start making money. I'm not going to say it's a lot of money. Uh, another thing that you can do if you have a house. Or apartment, you can rent it out on you can rent your place out on these are things you can do that if you already have certain things, you can start making money from those things. Uh Chuck, thanks for doing this. What are the other webinars we must uh, might look forward to the future? Both paid and free. Any additional subjects going to be covered? Getting out of speed tickets on your own. <laughs> I will not be giving legal advice. No, that will not be that. Uh, essentially, this is what's on the development map. We're going to do business courses. Uh, I am going to do the credit thing, credit course, but that's only going to be for the paid group. And I'm going to do digital products. One of the reasons that I rearrange things is I send out a lot of freaking emails and I gauge the responses from the emails. People are more interested on how to hustle, how to make money, how to start a business. Not so much with the digital products. So there's going to be stuff that's going to be group only. I, I won't do like this, but based on the response from last time, how to start a business, how to make money is a hugely one that's, um, information uh, Tony so the power of six is your plan of attack for the day and the next day right uh, 50 to 100 words is kind of dreaming goal building in general 50 to 100 words a day is to help you clean up your thought process when you really struggle to write and what you really think what is writing It's communicating if you are, and it's just you, and there's no one watching you, there's no one with a gun in your head, and you're sitting there struggling to put words on paper, that's an illustration of your thought process. Everyone could be a writer. Everyone could be. But the thing is, certain things come in. It's like, oh, God, someone's going to see this. Maybe I'm not spelling, you know, self-esteem issues. But essentially, by writing 50 to 100 words a day, you're going to clean up your thought process. When you clean up your thought process, you're going to make better decisions. When you make better decisions, you're going to have a better life. Uh, hey, Glenn, I currently don't have a business, but I'm looking to start one very soon. I have several business ideas, but I'm not sure which one would make the most sense to start. Any advice on narrowing down my options? Yep. Yep. Uh, this is something that we did in 30 days, 2,500 bucks. What you want to do is use the power of six. Take six of your ideals, rank them, and then start doing them. And you validate them. And what is validation? How fast can you take that ideal, turn it into a product or service, and make money? The longer it takes you to validate it, the crappier their ideal. If you have an ideal and it takes you six months to get your first dollar, it's a bad ideal. Uh, Chuck, you have vast knowledge, so I must ask. I see you change things up all the time to keep fresh in doing so. I have a lot of different interests, and I have learned in five years of doing this that I have to structure it and put it in a method that makes sense for people. But what I'm doing here, and I'll tell you why I'm doing this. Last week, Three people I know 
you know, saying, hey, you know, any job stuff because I'm about to get laid off. I just got laid off. I see that accelerating because I don't care how talented you are. And this is the thing that people don't understand. It's not about your talent. It's not about your degree. It's not about your skill level. Technology is making many skill sets obsolete at an alarming rate. Essentially, you're not working yourself out of job. Someone who's creating something is putting you out of job because of new technology. I mean, you're a business owner, right? This guy comes to you and he's like, hey, I have this robot that costs you $21,000 one-time cost, maybe a 200 bucks a year maintenance. And this robot will replace 10 people that you're paying anywhere from 30 to 50,000 a year. What are you gonna do? I robot is working for your corporation. This is going to accelerate because technology, and the thing is, it's a beautiful thing and it's a bad thing. I love it because I like technology, but I see in the next five to seven years, many people being displaced by technology and they may not want to start a business. They may not want to go through this, but they're going to be forced to because that's the only way they're going to be able to make any money. So that's one of the reasons I'm doing this. That's one of the reasons I put the course is different. And I created a business course that I would have wanted to take because I'm not going to talk to you about accounting 101. I'm going to talk to you about real issues of dealing with people and how to make money. Anna, let's see. Have a product idea, but don't have a mark of it, a markup of it yet. When you start the pre-order, should you use a CAD drawing to showcase the product? Um, this is what I would do if I was in your situation. I would go ahead and spend the money and make the product for the f many, many reasons. You do a drawing and a drawing is not going to give you the information that ha actually having the real product will. When you make the product, you're going to find certain things out that you're just not going to find out from the drawing. Like, does it work? Does it fit? Uh, how hard is it to manufacture? These are things you need to know before you start selling it. Because say you do the CAD drawing and you get a bunch of assumptions. It's like, well, you know, your, your manufacturer says, hey, um, it's only going to be $4 per item. And then you factor all that stuff in your price. But then when you get to making it, it's like, oh, we didn't know it was going to require this. So now it's $6 per item. And you're like, whoa, I wasn't expecting that. So make it, mark it up, even if you have to carve it out of wood, plastic, or go through a 3D printer. But get the thing built so you can get more information. Uh, I don't know. Let's see. Michelena. I hope I'm saying that correct. When you did your first book, did you do any marketing? How did you do it and what did it cost you? Oh, buddy, I actually pre-sold my book. Good question. I started telling storage auction stories on YouTube and I started marketing my book. I started writing the book July 17th. I started marketing the book August 6th on YouTube. The book released in October. So I had a look because the thing is, Marketing takes time to catch on. And when I first started, no one's like, yeah, this is another person I never heard of. He has a book. But at the 90 day mark, there were stories up there and people's like, when is the book coming out? When is the book coming out? So when I it released, I actually sold it as soon as it released. But yeah, if you know that you're going to finish that book, it would be well advised for you to start marketing it before you even start writing it. Okay. Uh, let's see, since, uh, I knew that question was going to come up. The Facebook group is a hundred thousand to 12, but there's different things in there. This course is already done 30 days to $2,500 per month. And what I will do, if you want to sign up, let's put that there and we'll send it to everybody and if you want the lifetime, and I highly suggest the lifetime because there's a lot of stuff that's coming. I'm gonna put that there. And voila. You cannot become a member of the Facebook. The Facebook group is a paid group. It is um, essentially business owners of people who want to own businesses that are in the group. And it's a secret group. You can't even find it unless you get an invite. I did that for a reason. 
One of the things I don't like about Facebook is everyone can see who's in the group and people will go mess with people, whereas this group is private. So if you're in the group, nobody knows you're in there unless you tell them. David, would you ever borrow money from a bank? I got a great system. I just need a certain amount to really push out my business. Oh, I've borrowed money from a bank. Uh, I used to, when I had to contract the office furniture business, I lived my life in debt. Um, I am not opposed to using credit to facilitate your business growth. I would just say, you know, start small, borrow more money than you need. Like, and this is what I mean. Say you think your project's going to need 10,000, borrow 30, use the 10, put the other 20,000 in another account and just start paying the loan back with that. So you're never in that position where, oh, I can't pay it back. You're, you're paying it back and you've got time, so to speak, if things go wrong that you can like, okay, I got this 20 that I borrowed. I can, you just keep paying on that loan until you straighten your stuff up. Uh, David, it seems having a system is far more important than having your own platform website these days. It's just true for most businesses. Can't uh, wait till the digital course starts. I believe the uh, the system is really it because when I first started, I was doing blogs. I was writing every day. I was pushing out content. Then I just noticed that someone, you know, the example that I put out earlier, someone could do something stupid and get way more attention than I could. And I'm sitting there banging on the internet like, hey, look at me, look at me, look at me. And I just realized, like, prime example, take someone like Snooki. She opens up a Twitter account. She gets like a million followers in days. So the whole thing is, you know, having a system and also learning how to get people to discover you is more important. I mean, you can have a stupid product. But if you have skills on getting discovered, you can make more money than the most brilliant person with a brilliant product. Let's see. Cleaver, can you recommend some websites to work from home? Uh, no, I have. This is this is where I'm at with those things. There are reputable websites where you can do work from home but the ones that are real pay nothing five bucks ten bucks you can work 40 hours and make 150 dollars a week if you're dead broke that's better than nothing i um believe you can start something build something and make way more money way faster cynthia how did you promote your book i'm using facebook for my upcoming book it's my first one ever low budget I don't want to spend a lot. I want my, my, my book pay for myself and make a lot. Uh, do not use Facebook to promote your book. All you're going to do is piss off all your friends and relatives. This is what you do. You get a YouTube channel or you get a podcast or you start a Facebook group for writers. What you're going to do is make yourself an authority figure. And that's going to do a lot more to promote your work than just posting stuff on Facebook. Uh, you can post stuff on Facebook until the cows come home. You can spend a thousand bucks on promoted posts and you will probably sell not one book. <laughs> I hate to tell it to you. Uh, it, it, it's, it doesn't work as well as people will have you think. Uh, peace. The Craigslist ebook that you have for making money. What is that about? Uh, several different ways how to buy and sell stuff on Craigslist. I really hadn't thought about that. Let's see. I will send that link out again. The Facebook group is a paid group only. Sean Michael, what is your thoughts on peer to peer lending? I think it's freaking awesome. If you can get the money and make that payment, it's awesome. Snooky from uh, the Jersey Shore. Okay, it is four o'clock and we are hit the allotment. 
Um, just letting you know, I will be back tomorrow, same time, 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. I'll send out an email. And if you want to start the uh, other course, which I highly recommend because it'll make this one a lot easier, I sent out links to everybody. Let's see, I will send it out again because apparently some more people came on after. All right, so sending those links once more. And I'm going to sign out. Like I said, I'll, and, oh, this is going to be different. This is every day. I know it's a little crazy, uh, but I'll be here every day from three to four. Okay. I uh, want to say thanks to everyone that came out. I appreciate you sharing your time, and I will see you on the good side.